Joining me now in the hot seat, my very good friend and Fox News contributor, Sarah Palin. Governor, welcome. By the way, we obviously can't trust the IRS. They proved that by targeting conservatives. And now the agency is giving their employees, their union employees, $70 million in bonuses paid for by the taxpayer. This can't be sitting well with you. No, it certainly doesn't. I think only in an Orwellian government would a collective bad deed be so generously rewarded. It, it, it is a shame, and it's just more reason to distrust our federal government and the nonsense that's going on in Washington, D.C. You know, that's the overriding theme of this show and basically about the past couple of months is can we trust them? Governor, can we trust them? Well, can I trust our federal government? Um, is the bear catholic does the pope live in the woods no i do not trust our federal government eric uh, you know that is the 17 billion dollar trillion dollar question as a matter of fact when you have a government that will not even acknowledge to the american public that we are bankrupt and instead the federal government continues to perpetuate the problem by digging more debt and spending money um, on ridiculous items and programs uh, th that's just one example as to why it is that the american public cannot trust this federal government it seems that Washington is for sale. And we have so many examples, even in the recent weeks, Eric, that lead people to um, understand and acknowledge that uh, we all need a very, very healthy distrust of Co our federal government. Governor, uh, this week the Tea Party suggested maybe it's time to ab abolish the IRS. What do you think of that idea? Right on. Absolutely. In fact, this would uh, give us reason to finally head towards a simplification of a tax code and adopt a, a flat tax. And, uh, you know, that way we could uh, abolish the bureaucracy that is so burdensome and so expensive and really engaging in some ridiculous antics today in the IRS. And it would allow um, some sledgehammering of crony capitalism also and some corruption within uh, the, the tax cheats and um, the that whole scenario, I think uh, this would give us great reason to uh, make more sense of uh, the coffers that are being filled by the American public's uh, fruit of their labors. Now, let's take a look. The, we, we, the IRS gave us a, a comment. Let's pull up on the full screen. It says, um, regarding the $70 million in bonuses, quote, the IRS is under a legal obligation to comply with its collective bargaining agreement, which specifies the terms by which awards are paid to bargaining unit employees. Now, Governor, that's part of the problem. It's a federal government program. We're paying their salaries, yet they're a union. Is this, does this not, like, drive you crazy? It drives me crazy because you can anticipate that the Obama administration will not even push back on what this union is demanding for its employees. That, that's what's a shame here is that uh, the Obama administration will kowtow to their friends who are union thugs. The leadership of so many of these unions are thugs and they won't push back, unfortunately, because it gives bad name to the uh, brothers and sisters within the union who, who just want want to produce well for the American public and do their job. It's their leadership that is engaged in the thuggery that, unfortunately, Obama will not push back right. against. We have, we have no idea how high up this scandal goes. But, Governor, look, if the IRS is willing or able or committed to targeting conservative groups, you have to wonder if that is spread throughout the federal government right now. The reason why I bring that up is because this week we also learned that FBI Director Mueller has said that they are actually targeting Americans with drones. Your thoughts? That's very disturbing because uh, I think what Mueller is telling us is, hey, America on U.S. soil, we're, we're going we're gonna to shoot you down just a little bit because he's talking about just this uh, uh, minimal impact of drones on U.S. soil. Now, what this allows us to understand, though, is that Rand Paul was right when the senator engaged in the filibuster and what he was asking for those couple of months ago. He was asking for these unanswered questions about domestic use of drones and the impact on the American public. What, what were they? What was going on? And was it actually happening? Of course, he was uh, chided and, and mocked and, and ridiculed by the Obama administration and by some in the Senate for engaging in such a thing. But Rand Paul was right. He was asking the question. And now, finally, we're getting an answer that, yes, drones are used on American soil. Okay, so now we have the IRS that's targeting um, uh, conservative groups because they don't agree with President Obama's ideology. We have the FBI who's targeting certain Americans. We don't know who, 
who they're targeting. They said very limited uses, et cetera, but he didn't specify who and why they were using the drones. Um, again, can we, tr let's ask again, can we, can we trust them? We're building a little argument here. Well, we're building a very strong case against that trust of today's federal government. I personally do not trust any government that's being led by Barack Obama when he is fulfilling his promise to fundamentally transform this most exceptional nation. As I've said so many times, we don't need a fundamental transformation. We need a fundamental restoration of what is good and free and right about America. I do not trust a government under this uh, leadership that would want to change what we know is so good about America. Okay, Governor, one more now. Let's, let's continue to build this case. Um, Ed Snowden, the um, NSA whistleblower blower who uh, went to China, went to Hong Kong and then China, and said that the NSA was actually blanketing and taking information from Verizon telephone customers, and this scandal may be bigger and bigger and bigger. I got an exclusive interview with his father, Lon Snowden. Take a listen to how he assesses the situation. Listen. What's occurring is very similar to Every morning, the government walks up to your mailbox, or afternoon, they pull the envelopes out, they open them, they look at your mail, they copy it, they archive it in case they want to look at it sometime in the future, in case you do something wrong sometime in the future. They reseal the envelopes, they put them back in your mailbox, and they do it every day over and over and over again. All right, all right Governor, so I have, the IRS, I have the IRS targeting conservative groups. I have the FBI droning certain Americans, we're not sure whom, and now we have the NSA listening to Americans uh, violating the Fourth Amendment, by the way. Fourth Amendment Constitution yeah. says you need probable cause. They didn't look for probable cause. It feels to me like we're either in Iran or communist China. Your thoughts? Well, I think any American with an ounce of common sense would say, hey, something's wrong here, especially in, in regards to this discussion about Snowden. Snowden is not the problem. Here, we're told, oh, just, you know, relax. Don't, don't worry about government spying on all of our communications, building that apparatus to be able to spy on all of us, that that's no big deal. But it is criminal, the person who told us about what our government is doing. That, that's what's backwards about this. Uh, Snowden is not the problem. The problem is government violating our Fourth Amendment right, taking away our privacy. And I was a, a victim of my emails, my communications being hacked when I ran for vice president. In that campaign, I said the same thing. I said, what difference is it from some hacker coming in and opening up physically my mailbox and going through my mail uh, to be used against me at some point. Government in this case is doing the same thing that that punk hacker kid did to me during the VP uh, campaign. It's not a safe, ethical, moral, nor legal measure being taken by our government. I got to tell you, Governor, I, I appreciate you being here, spending some time on cash in this morning, because these individually may not seem like a lot, but when you add them up, can we trust them? The answer is unequivocally, in my opinion, a big fat no. Governor Sarah Palin, thank I you for it. joining us. Thanks for uh, hanging out and cashing in this morning. Thanks so much.